And that sounds like the right note to me. Mm. And you can confirm this uh, just by trying to move it up and down and seeing if it fits anywhere else. Let's try go down. Yeah, that's kind of like dissonant and doesn't fit to me. So that sounds right and up. That also sounds out. That one sounds right to me. Hey guys, Bound to Divide here with Ableton Tips, and today I'm going to show you a few techniques I use to find chords in my favorite songs. So this is the progression we're going to be using today. And the chords I'm talking about are the ones that are kind of like sweeping up in pitch, they're brown the most distinctive ones in this song. And the first technique I always like to do is to just try and use my ear. Even if you don't have a good ear and you're a beginner, just try and do it. Just try and listen to the note and then find the matching note. Because every time you do that, you'll get a little bit better at it and you'll develop a strong ear. And eventually it'll be super easy to do. And you'll develop something called relative pitch, which is super useful uh, in music in general. And then another thing before we get started is to just make sure that you're using an instrument that sounds similar to the one that you have in the song. So in this one, for example, it's like this uh, dark kind of saw wave pad sound. So I've kind of remade that. But if, for example, you were hearing a piano, then use a piano. Or if you're hearing a guitar, use a guitar because uh, the timbre of the sound can often throw you off if it's not like the same character as it is in the song. So this is the sound. <laughs> It's just a saw wave with a filter on it, some EQ, and then it's got this like pitch envelope that's making it sweep up. And I know it's not as well designed as the one in this demo, but I just wanted to have kind of a rough sound to work with. So now I'm going to listen to the chord. And kind of just take a mental note of the, the highest note I'm hearing in the chord. It sounds like... Mm, so I'm going to like try and find that, that note on the piano roll. I've enabled uh, the earphone thingy over here so I can hear the note. And to me it sounds like that. Maybe a bit lower. Yeah, so maybe this... Mm, mm. So I'm just going to place that note and then listen to these together. And turn down the original one. And that sounds like the right note to me. And you can confirm this uh, just by trying to move it up and down and seeing if it fits anywhere else. Let's try go down. Yeah, that's kind of like dissonant and doesn't fit to me. So that sounds right and up. That also sounds out. That one sounds right to me. And then you got to try and figure out what other notes they are in in the chord. So then what I like to do next is just to duplicate it and, and start pitching it down and seeing what feels right and what doesn't. So let's try the F. Sounds wrong. Sounds like it could be part of the chord. So let's leave it in there and let's try and add some more notes. Okay, so that sounds like... Um, all the notes in the chord to me just by ear but this still feels a little bit bright and happy compared to his which is a bit more moody so just because of my basic understanding of music theory i know that removing this major third this e will make it sound a bit darker so yeah that's that sounds like the right chord to me which is a power chord it's just the c and the g let's delete that one Okay, so if you really can't do this, if you try it and it's, the chord doesn't sound right at all to you, I'm going to teach you another two techniques I like to use where we're going to be using a combination of our eyes and tools and plugins to just try and figure out what's happening. So the first one is a plugin called Span. I've got it already loaded up on, on the channel. It's a free plugin and it's just a spectrum analyzer, so it shows us all the frequencies over here in the song. And if you open it up, it's going to be in a default mode, like this. Which isn't super helpful for what we're doing, so we're going to set it to low frequency inspection here, this preset. 
and that's going to give us like a higher resolution so we can see the individual harmonics more clearly. Then what I'm going to do is we just kind of look at all these harmonics and try and figure out which ones are part of the chord. So I know that the chord is pretty low down um, frequency wise, it sounds like it's going to be around here to me. So I'm not going to be looking down at the sub and I'm going to be looking for harm harmonics that are appearing and then disappearing at the same time as the chord is. So you can hear the chord goes and then like fades out. You don't hear the chord anymore and then you hear it again and it's gone. So yeah, let's have a look at these and see which harmonics are popping in and then disappearing. So the first one I saw was over here. And it, now you can see where I've placed my mouse. Um, there's a little number up here, a little um, number and letter. So this corresponds to the note. So let's just look at that again. So here we can see that C3. So if we go back to our piano roll and we look for C3, well, we can see here we're on C2. But frequency wise, if we just had to take this um, span over here and copy it over here, let's have a look where these notes are playing. Yeah, so the C3 is actually playing at the lowest over here. So it's just the way the synth is configured. So don't um, get confused by that. Okay, so the first so the first note that we heard was that C. And here you can see that G over here kind of hangs around. It doesn't really disappear, but that's because we've got a note in the arpeggio that dun 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 and it's hitting that G, so it's going to be, it's not going to disappear. So that G, that other harmonic is hidden behind there. But this already gives us a hint that it's, it's the G. So I would just try out those two notes and see if they sound right. And then if yes, move on to the next chord. So the next chord. Then we've got a B. So B and an E. Let's try those. So here's the E and the B. Was the, the B was below the E, I think. E. Here we've got another B, E, and B. So we know that there's Bs and Es. And just the way the chord is moving, like it's definitely moving up. So I'm going to assume that the E is down here and the B is up here. And that would make sense because then we've got this power chord, this like fifth, perfect fifth moving up. And let's just listen to that. And that's too quick. So I'm just going to extend this out here and turn off loop. And just listen to them together. Sounds right to me. And then we move on to this next one. So that one sounds like it's still moving up. So let's have a look at it on the span here. D, G, D. E. So I'm seeing Ds and Gs here. Let's see. Let's try putting the D note up here. And the G. That sounds right to me. And then we're going back down to that first chord over there. You can hear it's the same chord. Okay, so that's uh, the technique using span. Uh, there's another one I want to show you, and that we're going to be using a little feature in Ableton called uh, Convert Harmony to New MIDI Track. But before we do that, what we want to do is just chop out the portion of sound that we're working with, because otherwise it's going to render out this entire um, audio file, which is going to take quite a long time 
because it needs to analyze it and figure out what's happening. So we're just going to chop that out and we're also going to consolidate it. So control J to consolidate. And that's just going to make sure that there's no other audio information inside this clip other than what we've selected over here. Okay, so now let's do that convert harmony to new MIDI track. And this is going to be listening to everything. So it's going to be listening to the harmony of the kick drum, the hi-hats, everything. So you're going to get quite a messy file to work with here. Do we solo this? You can see what I mean. So you can see at the bottom we've got the kick drum there and we don't really care about that. So I'm just going to delete all of these. My process for this is basically to just try and remove everything that doesn't sound like it's part of the chord. So when I listen to this, these notes at the top here don't sound like they're part of the chord. They're too high up. They don't sound right. And this dun 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 dun. That is um, part of that pluck that we're hearing, that rhythmic pluck. So I'm going to delete that. And then we can see that these two notes are the next most prominent harmony. And we know pre from previously that this is the correct chord. So we can verify that. Here we can see that this is the CG. So let's move on to the next one. I'm not going to do all of them. Uh, this is just kind of to show you my technique. So the next one. So that top note sounds right to me. Uh, this isn't right because that just sounds like it's rhythmic. And this E note over here uh, sounds rhythmic too. So I'm going to delete that. And then we left with these two notes, which uh, is a B and a B which uh, is correct, there, you know, we have got a B in that chord. We know from previously that the chord is actually a D, uh, was it, no, sorry, E and B. Uh, so this technique might throw you off a little bit because Ableton hasn't actually recognized the E over here. It's only picked it up right at the end over here. So that's why you've got to use like a combination of your eyes and your ears and just use different tools and different methods. But then um, once you think you've found the right notes, then you just load them into your instrument and play them and see if they sound right and just keep adjusting and listening. None of these techniques are perfect and that they won't work for you every time, uh, but that's why I'm showing you many different ways. So you can use a combination of them to try and figure out your chords. Okay, so those are like the main techniques I use within Ableton. If these all fail me, my eyes have failed me, my ears have failed me, the next thing I'm going to do is just turn to the internet and I'll go on YouTube and see if somebody else has tried to do the same thing as me or they're teaching how to play the song on the piano where they've figured out the chords. Oftentimes if you're using a quite a popular song, you'll easily be able to find it on YouTube. Um, another great resource is Hook Theory. So if you go to Hook Theory, forward slash theory tab, you can search for songs here in the search box. And I know that there's quite a lot of dead mouse here, so I've just loaded up a song from him. Um, and this is great because you can just click on the piano button over here and then click on chords and it shows you the chords. And you can also hear them. It also shows you the melody. And it shows you all the different notes in the chords and stuff. So this is also a great resource. So yeah, those are the, all the main resources I use. Again, I recommend that you always use your ears and your eyes first, the techniques that I've shown you in Ableton, because those will strengthen your ear and you'll actually um, have some sort of long-term progress if you do it like that. If you always just go to the internet first to find these things, then you're not really training your ear. Okay, that's it for today's lesson. Thanks for watching, guys. If you want to dive a little more deeper into music theory, we've got some courses on harmony and melody that are linked below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.